Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. I have an extra video for you this week. As Christmas will soon be upon us, I decided to listen to my Christmas 2019 and 2020 videos again and have realised that the audio on both of these could do with some improvement. So I've re-recorded them into one narration featuring a mixture of 17 slightly less serious Christmas crimes together with some short stories of true crimes solved in the most unusual ways. First we shall be visiting Australia in April 2012 when 21 year old Reese Owen Jones and 20 year old Kerry Mules from South Wales in the UK were on a working holiday. After attending a beach party where a great deal of vodka was consumed, they decided to pay SeaWorld on Queensland's Gold Coast a visit. The fact that the park was closed at the time did not deter the pair. After breaking into the park and having a wander around, they decided to go swimming with the dolphins before letting off a fire extinguisher near the shark enclosure. The next morning they woke up feeling particularly fragile and were surprised to find that they were not alone in their apartment. Wandering around was a seven-year-old fairy penguin by the name of Dirk, which, in their drunken state, they had decided to take from the theme park. In a state of hungover panic, they tried to care for Dirk by feeding him and putting him in the shower, before eventually deciding to release him into a nearby canal. Luckily for Dirk, who had spent his whole life in captivity, the pair were spotted by some locals who reported them to the police Dirk was returned to SeaWorld unharmed, while Reese and Kerry were both fined 1,000 Australian dollars. During the Christmas season in Ohio in 2011, a 44-year-old man by the name of Terry Trent, who had a history of drug charges, was high on bath salts. It's a type of drug similar to amphetamine. In his drug-induced state, he broke into a home in Dayton, Ohio, through a back door. However, he did not take a thing. Instead, he made himself comfortable, carefully arranged, then lit some Christmas candles, hung a Christmas wreath on the garage door, and then settled down to watch television. When he was discovered by the 11-year-old son of the homeowner, he was very polite, immediately apologised for scaring the boy, and said he would leave straight away. The boy called his mother, who was next door, and the police soon arrived. Terry was arrested without incident. Next, we shall visit Chatham in Kent, England, where in 2013, four men set up a Blackberry Messenger group, which they gave the convenient title of Armed Robbers. On this group, they posted various pictures, including selfies, posing with a handgun, and a photograph of one of the gang members wearing a distinctive pair of purple pyjama bottoms covered in sheep. The very same pyjama bottoms, which he chose to wear during one of the armed robberies, with the level of evidence provided within these Blackberry messages, the men were jailed for a total of over 40 years, with the judge describing the group as having a cavalier attitude and behaving in a truly amateurish fashion, which would have been seen as amusing if it were not for the serious nature of their crimes. A 24-year-old man from Kingston, Ontario, was really not feeling the Christmas spirit when he decided that it was a good idea to shape his hair into devil horns and then attend the Santa Claus parade. Walking along the parade route, he thought that it was appropriate to shout obscenities at those waiting for the parade to start before telling all of the small children gathered that Santa Claus does not exist. Everyone knows he does. After ruining the magic of Christmas for many of the youngsters present, he was finally stopped by the police. He was arrested and charged with causing a disturbance, public intoxication and breach of probation. In December 2000, fishermen in Poland came across the body of Wroclaw businessman Dariusz Janiszewski in the River Oder. He had been tortured and murdered. An investigation was launched, but there was little progress made and the case soon went cold. Five years later, the police received a tip-off about a so-called perfect crime and were told to read the best-selling crime novel by Christian Buller, which had been published two years earlier. 
The book, whilst detailing the murder of a woman, not a man, matched the details of Darius's torture and murder almost exactly. Further investigation soon revealed that Darius was having an affair with Christian's ex-wife and also that Christian had sold Darius's phone online in the days following his murder. Christian was soon arrested, but when the case went to trial, claimed that he had used details from press reports about Darius's murder as inspiration for his novel. This was found to be untrue, and he was found guilty of planning and orchestrating the crime and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Diners and staff at a Monterey branch of Buffalo Wild Wings got slightly more than they bargained for in Christmas 2015. Whilst enjoying their dinners, a man walked into the restaurant and, despite his black beard and lack of red suit, claimed to be Santa Claus. He then walked around to tables, telling the diners he had a gift for them, before handing out little parcels of marijuana wrapped in napkins to everyone eating at the diner. He then stuffed the tip jar full of the illegal drug and sat down to eat. The police were informed and soon arrived at the scene where they searched Santa's belongings and found more than two pounds of prepackaged pot. 57-year-old Randy Lange was then arrested and charged with furnishing marijuana. In March 2015, 24-year-old Christopher Wallace of Fairfield, Maine, was on the run from police following a burglary in Pierce Pond Township two months earlier. Having successfully evaded capture, Christopher started to become a little overconfident. At around 6.30pm on Sunday the 22nd of March, the police received a tip-off that Christopher had posted a message on Snapchat stating that he was back at his home in Norwich Walk Road. When the police arrived at the house, they were greeted by 20-year-old Erica Hall, who claimed that she had not seen Christopher for several weeks and allowed officers to search the house. As the search was underway, Christopher posted a second message on Snapchat. Unbelievably, this time he boasted that the police were in his house looking for him whilst he was hiding in a cabinet. The police officers went straight to his hiding place, where Christopher was arrested and then charged with burglary, theft, and violation of conditions of release. Every morning in December 2014, 42-year-old Carrie Carley's husband, 18-year-old Jeremy Lewallen, would return to their home in Colorado with a couple of new Christmas decorations. Carrie claims to have suspicions as to where the decorations were coming from as Jeremy had been jailed in November for stealing Halloween decorations. Having not fully thought through his plan, Jeremy stole over $2,000 worth of decorations from his neighbours and was then reported to the police when one of his victims saw his own Christmas lights in a display in Carrie and Jeremy's garden. When Jeremy was confronted about the stolen decorations, he simply laughed and said he was just doing his job. Jeremy was sentenced to six months in jail with six years probation. In case you're wondering, the decorations were returned to their owners. In Johannesburg, South Africa, some residents returned to their home to find that it had been burgled and they immediately called the police. When the police officer arrived shortly afterwards, they sat down with the residents to take a statement from them. As the homeowners were giving their statement of what had happened, they looked down to see that the burglar was lying under the sofa that the police officer was sitting on. His head was just inches away from the police officer's legs. The residents alerted the policemen and were immediately given back their possessions before they had even left their house. The burglar was arrested and taken away in one of the quickest cases the police officer had ever solved. An 18-year-old shoplifter from Tulsa in Oklahoma thought that he had found a foolproof way of beating a store's security alarm system. After selecting the clothes which he wanted to steal, he carefully removed all of the security tags before walking out of the store. However, as he attempted to leave, the alarm triggered and he was stopped by a security guard. Despite carefully removing all of the security tags, he had placed them all in his own pocket before attempting to leave the store. During the Christmas season in 2015, while many in Brazil were busy at the Black Friday sales, a man dressed in a full Santa Claus costume arrived at Campo de Marte Airport. Santa rented a helicopter from an air taxi service, telling the pilot that he was hiring it as a Black Friday treat for himself. During the flight, Santa pulled a weapon on the pilot and forced him to fly to a small farm on the outskirts of Sao Paulo. 
Here they were met by Santa's accomplice, not thought to have been one of his elves, where the pilot was tied up and the pair made their getaway in the stolen helicopter. After several hours of struggling, the pilot managed to break free and notify the police. A search was soon in operation, but no sign of the helicopter, Santa or his accomplice have ever been found. When a 29-year-old thief in Germany decided to break into his neighbour's flat, he decided to use a technique shown in so many films, forcing the lock using his credit card. As he was rattling around at the door, his neighbour woke up, so the burglar grabbed his credit card and made his escape. Unfortunately for him, the card had snapped in half, leaving behind his full name and bank account details. The police were knocking at his door shortly afterwards, where they found the would-be thief with the other half of his credit card, trying to work out what to do next. In 2012, 29-year-old James Allen decided to rob a newsagent in Abingdon, Oxford, which is in England. Armed with a toy gun, he donned a balaclava and marched up to the counter of the store. Here he demanded the money before turning to leave and inexplicably removing his balaclava as he walked back through the store. As he got to the door he tried to make his exit, repeatedly pushing on the door before assuming it was locked and he tried to smash it in. As he attempted to kick his way out he fell into a container of drinks and ended up sprawled across the floor. The woman who he had just held up at gunpoint walked over and opened the door for him. He just needed to pull instead of pushing it, and he eventually made his escape. However, with CCTV footage of the entire debacle, he was soon arrested and sentenced to two and a half years for robbery, along with two years for the possession of an imitation firearm. Shortly before Christmas in 2004, 31-year-old Jason Shinkarik returned to his home in Winnipeg, Canada, only to find that thieves had broken in through his back door. Luckily, his wife and children were not home at the time, but the thieves had combed through the house stealing several of Jason's duffel bags, which they filled with clothes, jewellery, watches, alcohol, and all of the presents from under the tree. The heartbroken family reported the robbery to the police that evening and started to plan how they were going to sort their Christmas with all of their gifts stolen. The following morning, Jason made the 10 minute drive to go to work as a manager of Ponderosa Trading. What started as a normal day soon held quite a twist. Three men walked into the pawn shop carrying three large duffel bags full of random items that Jason immediately recognised as his own. One of the thieves was even wearing the tracksuit that Jason had bought as a Christmas gift for his brother. Jason played along for a while to check that the contents of the bags were in fact his and then activated a switch that closed the gate inside the store, meaning that no one could escape. After grabbing a baseball bat for defence, he asked where the rest of his things were, to which the man in the tracksuit said he would go and track them down if Jason agreed not to press charges. Jason agreed to let him leave so that he could get the rest of the stolen goods as long as his accomplices were left behind. After a short while, the man in the tracksuit called back to say that he couldn't get the rest of the items and then fled. The two accomplices were arrested. Eventually, after three more robberies, the man in the tracksuit was apprehended and found to be Alphonse Traverse, a local man who was out on parole for manslaughter. His parole was revoked and he returned to prison. In 2014, 27-year-old Dean Smith visited his local branch of Barclays Bank. He only planned to update his address details on his bank account, but after seeing the money in the tills, he decided upon a different plan. Just 30 minutes after giving the cashier his new address, Dean returned to the bank in a basic disguise made up of sunglasses and socks over his shoes. He threatened the cashier with a bread knife and demanded that they handed over the money from their till. The cashier instantly recognised him, pressed the panic button and refused to give him the money. Dean ran away empty-handed. South Wales Police quickly tracked him down to the address which he had helpfully given to the cashier earlier that day. He was jailed for two and a half years. In 2014, 30-year-old Taras Scott and 27-year-old Gerard Dupree felt that they had come up with the perfect crime in order to steal a Barbie motorised car and a Barbie Glam vacation house. 
They visited Walmart in Lake Wales, Florida and loaded the items into the trolley before heading to the exit separately. Once they approached the exit, with acting definitely not worthy of an Oscar, Gerard slowly and carefully collapsed to the floor whilst clutching his chest. As the employees and security went to his aid, Taras walked out of the store with the trolley full of goods. After seeing Taras exit and spending little more than a few seconds on the floor, Gerard makes a miraculous recovery, stood up and strolled out of the store. The men then met at their vehicle and drove away thinking they had got away with their crime. Unfortunately for them, their entire charade was captured on CCTV cameras and they were both soon arrested and charged with theft. And finally, back in 1988, some police officers were demonstrating new law enforcement technology within their police car to a group of children. Also watching was a Detroit man by the name of R.C. Gatelin. He was intrigued by this new development and asked if the demonstrating officer could show him how it worked. The officer obliged and asked Gatelin to hand over his driver's license to be scanned into the system. When this was scanned into the new state-of-the-art equipment, it immediately identified Gatelin as someone who was wanted in connection with an armed robbery. The robbery that had taken place in St. Louis two years ago. He was immediately arrested. Thanks for listening to the Crime Reel today, and I hope you've enjoyed listening to these short crimes. If you have any comments or suggestions for new cases which you would like me to cover, then please get in touch. Thanks very much for listening to the Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. My favourite Christmas film is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. What's yours? Goodbye.